All right, I'm going to open up the Redevelopment Authority meeting for March 20th, 2018 at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda is review of policies for the CRA. Mike, you were going to work on that for us and bring the policies um, from KMP on proper procedures on disposal of properties? Yes. Um, so, uh, at the last meeting, I stated that I would go out to KMP, and they haven't sent the bill yet, but I'll give that to the Redevelopment Authority at the next meeting. Yep. Um, to move forward with um, putting together to clear up any confusion that uh, has been, you know, posted online and discussed in, in meetings, what the procedure is for all tax title property. Um, so we'll pass those out right there. And actually, since I got enough for the audience too, if they want to look, pay attention. So, you know, there were some statements that have been made as to how and what the Redevelopment Authority can and can't do, and what's happening with some of the town uh, property that's, that's currently in tax title, or has been foreclosed, or is in land of low value. So what this memo does, and I'm just going to skip, go through it just section by section, you know, in as much detail, as little detail as you want, is that the first item that has to happen is when the town goes forward to foreclose on property, generally in the second to third year of them not paying their taxes. And keep in mind that the town collects 16% interest when someone is late on their tax bill, is that the process is to foreclose on to go to land court. And during that time that you're at land court, uh, two things happen. One is you continue to accrue interest, the town does. And the second, that once it's in tax title, is all legal fees are also assigned to the property. So the town doesn't necessarily pay any legal fees doing this. This is paid for by the applicant. The other option beyond going to um, foreclosure by land court is to go to foreclosure of land of low value. And this is something that we've been working on for a little over a year and a half with DOR is that we have what's called the Cedar Swamp, mm -hmm. which has many of little parcels, slivers of parcels, that, um, that uh, we have moved forward with uh, DOR to get them classified so that they can be put out to auction for land of low value. If no one actually bids on it, then the town actually takes those over as part of the process. And then in item C is the town can actually um, sell through an auction the deeds to foreclose on property, in essence, allowing the private sector to move forward and actually make an offer on what is owed to the town. It always has to be above what the town is to receive, and that gives them the right to foreclose on the property. Sometimes in these instances is that sometimes the private sector may get into a bidding war and pay more than what the property is worth. Now that generally happens in a city or something like that, but there have been some rare, some uh, times where that has happened, and that's called a deed in lieu of foreclosure that you would sell that off to them. From there, we then go into the public auction of tax title property. Again, I'm not asking you to read this all tonight. There's a lot here, but this just memorializes the process to go through there. And it describes that when you go to uh, a public auction, a tax title property, as to the procedure that needs to go through and make that happen. And again, it's very, you know, defined as to the steps that have to be taken um, that the town would have to do. So moving forward to Section 3 is the assignment of tax titles. And th this kind of goes into a, a question that was inaccurately responded to that um, that the as to who actually owns the tax title once the things are done they're actually still under the control of the treasurer of the town until until that is actually brought to one of you know as I mentioned before the the foreclosure uh, auction uh, or deeds and foreclosure or or land of value then the, it would go to town meeting to transfer to and retain by a town board. So that property would be assigned to 
you know, whether it's the Conservation Commission, they may want some land for conservation, the Recreation Committee, um, or to the Board of Selectmen, they may just want to hold on to property. And that would happen through a town meeting vote. Until that town meeting vote occurs, then the property is still under the care and custody of the treasurer of the town, short of going through one of those area, earlier pieces. And when we get into Section 5, Section 5 really goes into significant detail about how the town would go about conveying property. It, it's, it's three pages long. And there are some thresholds in there, whether it's above or below $35,000, that creates one process versus another process from an appraisal standpoint. Um, but the redevelopment authority, to be clear, does not have the authority to sell land on its own, as was previously stated. The redevelopment authority, however, in an urban renewal plan, can sell property to an end user directly with the approval of, of Mass uh, DHCD, Department of Housing and, Com and Community Development. They're the ones that actually have to approve a sale that you would do for development rights. So short of that, then everything has to go through this very detailed proposal for being advertised in the central registry, put in multiple newspapers, have an appraisal done on the property, again, depending upon if it's above or below $35,000, and then awarding that to, to the, the highest bidder that comes in. And at that point, once that occurs, then you can move forward with actually doing the closing. But keep in mind, that can never occur until you have a town meeting vote authorizing the appropriate board to do something with it. And without that vote at town meeting, um, it stays within the care and custody of the tax uh, custodian. So again, you know, I encourage you to take a read through this, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to get back to me. Uh, but but this really goes through the process, and I think clarifies um, any uh, misinformation that may have been discussed at the at the last meeting. It, it's pretty straightforward. I have some questions. Go ahead. All right. So first of all, this this is a new policy created, correct? And it's for the no. Well, it says March 6th, 2018. Bob, so you asked if this is a new policy created. I said no. Okay, then why did we get uh, Copeland and Page to do this if we already had one available to us? This is the opinion of the foreclosure process because there was misinformation presented at the last meeting. This is not a policy. This is law. This summarizes the law. There is no new okay. policy. All right. So you say, it says here, who I understand is the treasurer collector, uh, who is the custodian. Isn't there a certain title that goes along with that? And I don't think that's been uh, appointed, as far as I know, as for the treasurer in Kava. There's a certain title for somebody who's in control of property within the town. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the paperwork that I found all says the town of Carver and it's under the Board of Selectmen, under the assessors, saying that they're in control of it. So I don't um, know what, and, uh, Bob, wait a minute. First of all, the paperwork you're finding in the Board of Assessors, would you be more specific? Because when you're stating that paper says that the Board of Selectmen are in control, what specifically okay. do you mean by under control? Under the property record cards. Okay, the for property time. record cards is a summary of the property. Correct. And okay. it says who's in control of that property. It says the Board of Selectmen city council, something like that, slash city council. Okay, so you're talking a standard form well, that I'm, uses the word city council, which we don't have a city council. Right, we have a board of selectmen, but okay. it also says board of selectmen. Okay. Okay, so it's that's, a standard that's form. where it's coming. It's a fill in the blank. Okay, so the next one is that... <clears throat> but again, let's, let's just be clear, is that this is the regulation that the treasurer okay. is the tax title custodian and okay. is in control of the property it until it's transferred from the town understanding isn't really saying that's what it is do you just have any different information huh well I, I just said there's a certain title that you give somebody yes. for it right and if you okay. go back to the so. legislation that created the treasurer title the treasurer collector in this town it does say including all laws under the cert certain sections that they'll be entitled to all right so we'll move forward next all right thank you when it says transfer care custody the rda has the ability to take property 
or not take, but to receive property, all right, from the town, correct? The town, as in any department here that's listed in um, section uh, three, can be assigned by the Board of Selectmen to the Redevelopment Authority. Which means you would have to go to the Board of Selectmen and request that first, and then the No, 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 wait, no. Wait. you'd have to go to town meeting to actually have the property move from tax title so that the Treasurer okay. Collector can move that to the Board of Selectmen. Excuse me one second here. Okay, then let me finish, because in order to put something on the town meeting, Mm -hmm. a warrant mm -hmm. you need to go to the selectmen first to get that on the agenda for the warrant to go I mean you have to talk to them about it and say this is what we want to do and everything and then they have to say okay fine we're going to put it on or it has to go through a petition article we do a petition article for it we Who, get who's we all right the redevelopment authority this is what i'm saying is so the redevelopment authority is going to do a petition article anybody can do a petition article never heard of a board doing a petition article. <clears throat> well, that's why I said we go to the selectmen and talk to them and say this is what we want to do. We want to put this on, all right, because we would like to take some property to develop it in some way, shape, or form for the town. And I think affordable housing covers us, too, that the rights to it. And it goes a little further than that is that, um, and I, actually the next agenda, I'd like this on there. We can talk about it. But... Um, the <laughs> Mazzilli Way property, that Habitat for Humanity, all right, that whole thing of how that went along for it. Um, kind of like to discuss that at the next meeting, because I think I'll go a little too far on this. But dealing with this here, I just want to make it clear that we need to discuss what we want to do if we would like a property, okay? We go to the selectmen, we ask them, hey, we'd like this property to do X, Y, or Z for it, okay? We discuss it with them first to be put on the, the warrant for town meeting. They approve it to go on to town meeting or they don't approve it to go to town meeting warrant. Then we go to town meeting and it gets voted on by town meeting, correct? So that's a new process you want to create, um, Mr. Chairman? The chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a uh, point of clarification, yes. Mr. Miller, unless you correct me if I'm wrong. But the RDA can submit an article for town meeting, just like the planning board can, the zoning board of appeals can. So you don't have to go... To, it wouldn't go, have to go to the Board of Selectmen to have this article done. If, that's, if you wanted the town to go ahead and transfer ownership from tax title to the Board of Selectmen to complete this process, the RDA can go ahead and submit that article. Is that correct? That's right. The RDA okay. has that's the ability of submitting articles uh, for consideration at the annual town meeting or, or special town meeting. Um, but Bob, what you've just laid out would be creating a new process. Is that what you're proposing? Well, that's to do? what it's that. Well, that's what I I just wanted to clarify that to say, hey, listen, because typically the selectmen vote on all articles that go before town meeting. That's different. That's different than who, who's submitting. Yes, we sub, the board of selectmen submit articles. The planning board does. Yes. The <laughs> ZBA. So there's nothing okay. to prevent. In fact, we've had town meetings where articles were submitted by the RDA. Yeah. Okay. All that comes before us is. You know, do we approve it or not? You know, do we support it? Five zero four one or whatever. But once okay. it makes it in, because everything that comes in before the deadline, that comes up. We don't pull any articles whether we like them or not. Yeah. Now they oh, do. The, the selection sure. do have the authority to not put articles on there if they're not in proper form. Uh, so they do have some flexibility as to what actually is on the final warrant. But I, I think what's important, Bob, is that what you've talked about is creating a new process. No, it just, we, it just, I'm sorry to say, but I mean, I just, he clarified it. I understand. No problem. Okay. But they do all actually have, like you said, the right not to put something on the warrant. Okay. Which I think that's what I said too. So, I mean, I, I'm pretty clear on this. All right. I just want to make sure that uh, me and the board member all understand that. All right, if we're going to do things for the town, to help the town or to help townspeople here, that um, the policy here or the law, what you're saying here, to follow is that um, this is something that all the town should have to follow. And you said you're going to submit a bill for Copeland and Page uh, to this here, to us, to pay when we have our own lawyer. For the redevelopment authority. Who's your lawyer for the redevelopment authority? Oh. O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Kathleen O'Donnell. Kathleen, Kathleen O'Donnell. O'Donnell. So, yep. I mean, I don't think we should have to pay for something that this is the town's going to have to follow. The whole town has to follow that, that, for it. Just for clarification, at our, at our last meeting, 
we asked the executive director yeah. to get the legal law on disposition of of, of um, properties. Right. That's what we got. But right. we, we, should got we should have went we, through our own lawyer. Though. Well, no, actually, for something like that, you, you, you would not do that. But, Bob, let's keep in mind, there was not a problem on the town because the town knows how to follow this. We have a TOPS committee, which you've left out of the discussion, which all properties are reviewed for. This was done explicitly at your request to answer your questions and to clarify some misinformation that was being presented. That's why it was done. So this was done specifically for the misinformation that was being presented. Um, we've done things differently in the past. I wasn't so, here in the past. And I'm I just understand focusing that, on the future. I'm just letting I'm just letting you know we've done things differently in the past. Okay, and therefore that's what I was looking under. But I just want to make sure that we still have that ability. I don't want us here at, with the redevelopment authority to turn around and say, "Oh, well, we can't do this now." I mean, we're limited of what we can actually do as a redevelopment authority. Because well, I I do want to make clarification to you. it will be as a board vote, not an individual vote. Most definitely. Make that clear because some of your interpretations and your misspeakings indicate that it's a board's intentions to do this and it, it's never been a vote from this board. This board walks as one. And we all have our opinions too. You can have your opinions, that's yeah. fine. But the board walks as one. We voted those policies in place. Whether you agree with them or not, the board walks as one. So if the you made that comment earlier that, you know, the redevelopment authority can put this put this out there. We never voted on a piece of property to do that. As an as we an did, article. We did to go to the board vote selectmen to talk about it. But as an article. But that was after it article. went through the TOPS committee and was recommended to go in this direction. The board didn't initiate it. It was asked of the board to review that. That's the piece that I mentioned you're trying to create new processes and policies. But the policy is that we have a TOPS committee that reviews all properties, and it, it includes the chairman of the redevelopment authority. When we do that, it includes somebody from the planning department. And, and then from there, then properties are assigned if the departments are willing, including CONCOM, including recreation. Can I ask you, Mr. Chairman, a yep. question? Uh, is it possible that we used to have MOUs, and let's use the Ben mm -hmm. Ellis as an example. Yep. It was under management, and what the town fathers or the selectmen created was an MOU that assigned the property to us for care under and care keeping. Care and custody. Care and custody or care yep. and keeping or whatever. Care and custody for, the dis for disposal. So we kept it going, mm -hmm. and we had like a 10% management sure. fee, etc. cetera. Yep. When it came... And I don't remember when it came time to put it on the market. Did you have to go back to the selectmen to, to get an updated MOU? I'm no, trying the to think MOUs, of how, because we had to go to the town meeting and the whole thing. But Yeah, we, the MOU was, was done after what, town meeting had approved <laughs> to take the, take the property, whether it was 21 Plymouth Street or Ben Ellis or what have you. Take that property and give it out of tax tax title tax collector who who governs that under the law given to the selectmen and we we were very specific when we went to town meeting that we wanted the property to come from the town to us in to disposal and we had a plan in place that's why we went to town meeting and we got it went to the selectmen first that's right selectmen then transferred it to us under care and custody under the mou Right. Of that the part didn't have to go to town meeting because town meeting gave the selectmen the authority yeah. to dispose of the property. The selectmen hired the redevelopment authority as your as their agent right. under the MOA, right. and then you were able to keep ten percent of the return right, on that right. to use into other redevelopment authority pieces. Right. Okay, so we never really owned it. We always were under the because we did. Custody. Because we did put it on the there market. Was we put it on the, the market. Yeah, there was one of the properties that I did see that, um, and title was transferred from the Board of Selectmen to the Redevelopment Street. Authority, back to the Board of Selectmen, back to the agent. And yep. to me, that was ass backwards, part yeah. of my French, yeah. is that once you have the MOA, the property would still remain with the Board of Selectmen. 
you would just be acting as their agent to sell the property. Right. Once right. you sell it, then they would then cut the you, they would cut the deal with you, but the title would be signed off by the board of selectmen, not the redevelopment authority. Right. 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 Yeah. Which would make yeah. things a lot easier than right. the way that was done before. Yeah. But again, hindsight's twenty twenty. And a lot of that is that we were going off of what we had for information. This this here gives the board better, more clarity, I think on the process well you probably you wouldn't put it under a uh, real estate you'd have to get an appraiser to appraise the property so it's a whole different situation at this Correct. point and depending upon the value of the property yeah, yeah and they 000. have to make a bid at or above the property right. um, is he, okay i understand all now that. when you have a redevelopment <clears throat> authority plan and you're operating with parcels within that boundary. In reference to the URP. In reference to the URP, you actually can sell property less than the actual value if it provides a public benefit to create economic development. So you have more flexibility. You have flexibility within a URP. Outside of the URP, you have zero flexibility. Mm -hmm. There is no difference between you or the Board of Selectmen doing it. Right. It's just that, you know, sometimes it may make sense for marketing purposes that if you're helping it develop or develop one parcel, this can help it and it may make sense to come through you guys. Okay. Yeah, and it gives us money in our treasury. No, no, absolutely. And in and, and doing that, that can always still happen at any yeah. particular time. And I, and, I'd like that to happen. <laughs> and, and, you know, I mean, the, the town can also fund the redevelopment authority as needed. Right now you're being funded, if you will, by the developer of Route 44. He's paying, you know, providing money to pay a lot of your bills. Right. Um, but in the future, um, you know, that, that could be part of the town budget as well. Okay. So another question here. Yep. Good. Is that so? My plan of taking Robert's Way, all right, and using it for affordable housing. Are you now saying that's not not available for us to do? I've never said it was available. Okay, so it is a possibility that we could, at some point, get that property and work with the local housing partnership or the um, housing to help create affordable housing on those that site? Well, I guess you got a couple issues. One, is that is that what the board wants to do? Two, is that what the selectmen want to do? Three, is that what the town meeting wants to do? You have a bunch of hurdles before that's even discussed. Is that something that's also going to fit in with our master plan in that area? What's the neighborhood impact going to be? I know that, and that's what you have to look at, not who the neighbor is or not if it was a former board member that lives there. You have to look at all of those, those issues and determine if it's in the best interest of the town to put affordable or low-income housing on that spot. And, and I'm going to sit here right now. I think that to state that is probably wrong because there hasn't been any due diligence on all of those other things to look at to see if it makes sense there. Given that there's some other opportunities in the town that are being looked at for senior housing to help provide more senior affordable housing in town. Okay. The, I think what you are saying is that the, the one meeting that you brought up at um, Council on Aging to use that building as senior housing, is that what you're saying? Because What one meeting? Um, uh, what was it? The... Counseling was it the counseling aging one that I I read, um, or no? Actually, it was the um, community preservation act meeting that I read. That I got all those meetings from 2014 that they didn't file with the clerk's office, but it's here or there. But I read that, and the one recent one where you had made mention of that. Is that what you're talking about? I've made mention of it many many times. I've had multiple okay. conversations with people on it. So, so multiple meetings. So. so I think that we're off track here. The, the key to this is is that having the proper law that's in place for this board to review and to go by is important. Whether or not there's a different project going on somewhere in this town, that, and the other but thing. But there's not. I'm, just, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just, he just made mention of it. There is no project. We don't know that. I don't know that. There's nothing in paper. So if you, if, that's just like Sam Roberts' way. 
Hey, I understand that. Okay, but it's all a view or a IE vision of what the community is doing. I think that the law is very clear. I suggest that every, every one of the board members read it and get very familiar with it um, for the simple reason being that if there is a time and a place that this board, as a board, decides to pursue an action, whether it's Robert, Robert's Way or, or something else, or um, Forest Street, for, exa for example, um, that we abide by the law and walk as a board. Um, that, I think, is important. Because right Street now, in my opinion, by? right now, and I'm not involved with Forest Street, I'm just going to do this as an opinion. Right now, I don't believe that this board has acted according to the law when it comes to forestry. No, I think we should be grandfathered. I mean, that process is so far ahead I, of everything. We haven't done anything with Forest Street that I know of. It's I don't know market. if you guys have agreed to an, a sale or whatever or anything um, like that. Is there, so, there is no grandfathering. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's no, <laughs> no. no. It's, not, so, it's not back on the market? So you have to take that piece of property depending upon if its value is over 35000 determine whether or not a full appraisal is with it, advertise in the central registry, put a deadline when somebody can make a bid on it, and, and follow this process for them. And it's from my understanding that, and it's public information, that the this board has acted and has put it back on the market with our realtor and all that other yeah. stuff. The reason, reason why I'm saying that this is good information for us because I think, in my opinion only, not in the board's opinion, that we need to relook at that and make sure that we're going by the law. Which one would that fall under, uh, Simon? Uh, so on that one, because that one has been given to the Board of Selectmen, and you're trying to sell the property right on their behalf. Yeah. And we have an MOU with it. With we that, do, yeah. You know, for the Board of Selectmen, say, to dispose of it. So right. we walk that path. So I think the conditions of that we miss is the central registry thing. Section you know, 5. Yeah, thank you, you got to follow Section 5, which is called conveyance by the town. Assume you're the town when you read this. Yeah. And that's the conveyance process the redevelopment authority will have to go through for that property. Okay. So I just think that it's important for this board to look at that where there isn't I, I am not in conflict because the uh, proposed person that was interested in it from as far as I know and I could be misspeaking hasn't moved on it with you guys so it's a good opportunity to make it right and follow section 5 and I, I suggest that this board does that so okay. can we put on the next agenda is just my I'd like to talk about Missouri Way, about that whole process. What does that have to do with what's active now? Well, Is that a I, past tense? It's a past tense. Has that tense. been sold? Oh, yeah. Then I don't see any reason for it no. to be on our, our agenda for a discussion. And Mr. Chairman, if I could ask, uh, what is the mission of the Redevelopment Authority? If your priority in your mission is to focus on the Route 44 Urban Renewal Plan development, which can fundamentally change the economics of the town, and obviously we still got the forestry piece. Yep. Beyond those two things, is there anything else that's a priority of the board? Uh, or should everything <laughs> fall under those two categories? My opinion is, is that this board has, it is in the process of working with the URP and making and going forward with that. And that is an essential and a lot of work. Um, I don't believe that. Um, that one and the Forest Street, I think, are the only two big projects that we have ongoing that has been ongoing for a while. The process that's in place and the board's been updated from, the, our, from our preferred developer three meetings ago of where they're at in the UIP process and the, um, and their, um, I can't think of the, the their permitting process, the Meepa. state MEPA, thank you, process where they're at and to get tied up in a couple different projects at once I don't believe would be good good process for us I think that we should stay focused on the URP I think that we should stay focused on Forest Street and make sure that it's being done correctly 
after following what the what reading what the law is and stuff. And I and I asked, I did get a copy of this and read this. Um, I'm no attorney, so I'm no perfect man on this. Trust me. Um, going back in stage and back, whatever's happened in the past is in the past. We need to stay focused on the future because what is going to happen, as Michael has said, in the North Carver URP, the URP is ours. Mm -hmm. This board's, this board needs to stay focused on the URP because everything that happens with the URP happens here. We have a preferred developer that's working at the permitting process, but that's us. Whether you like the responsibility or not, that's what we're here for. And if I could say this, and, um, and this is maybe a little bit in my executive director's report, is that um, you know we are working towards some type of an affordable housing senior complex. Uh, it's in its early stages, um, but I do see a role for the redevelopment authority. And I think I talked to Joanne a little bit about this, but that's not going to happen until 2019. So, but at that time, I'll probably be coming back to you guys with a conversation mm -hmm. on partnering with CPA, partnering with the Redevelopment Authority, partnering with the Housing Partnership as we go into 2019. Yeah, the local housing partnership. Right, with the town planner, or planning director, to move that forward. But it'll be done in an organized fashion um, once we have all the pieces together. And right now, we don't have those pieces together because our priority is the urban renewal plan. So that's more of a kind of a heads up that that's where I see that happening in 2019. But between now and then, you know, the urban renewal plan is really the focus of the redevelopment authority, in my humble opinion. Solely? Or with the forest street? With the forest street, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily take on new projects right now. You're going to have, you know, some potential additional board members elected at the next meeting. Um, and there is going to be a decent amount of work coming up with the urban renewal plan as they migrate through the MEPA process, and it's going to require a lot more of your attention. We're kind of in a holding pattern for this last nine months because the developer is really doing MEPA. We can't do anything until MEPA is done. But as he gets files the draft notice um, environmental impact report, things are going to start to get a little bit more busy. If, um, let's say that uh, the um, Robert's Way thing was something that we felt was a, a, a good thing to do, or all of us in this room felt was a good thing to do. You listed all of the, the criteria that would have to be met. Who would initiate that? How would all of that get done? The uh, the applicability of it, the uh, neighborhood. I mean, is that something that we would need to? Not necessarily. What happens, in, in, and Will can kind of fill you in on this, is the TOPS committee, mm -hmm. which would have somebody from the Conservation Commission, somebody right. from the okay. Planning, somebody from this board. It's usually the chairmen of each one, uh, a couple of key town staff. We would analyze all the different properties that are coming up and say, you know, this property is a really good piece of property that we may want to use for conservation purposes. Mm -hmm. Or this property really has some development potential. Let's dig into it some more. Why don't we send it over to the redevelopment authority to look into some more? Okay. That's how that would that would happen. There, there's a process that these normally go through. And, you know, that's how Far Street came in. That's how some of the other properties that were mentioned, they went through that process and, and they, they came out of that. What I will say though is that right now we are not putting any properties on the town meeting for April to transfer out because you know the town's also looking at this too is what are our priorities? And the priorities are for the urban renewal plan to get that moving because that's really a lifeline for more tax revenue to the town. And you know, as that gets through its permitting pieces, then it'll open up some bandwidth to focus on the next project and then the next project after that. All right, so you you don't see our role here as investigating properties that, for their potential use. You see that as being the TOPS group? I've never seen the Redevelopment Authority okay. do that. It's I don't know. Been, no, no, I'm just telling you. That's always been the TOPS process, and again, okay. you can comment on that. All right, only, so we're just an end, one of the many only possible when, end users. Only when right. Jack Franey was the treasurer collector okay. was on our committee he's the one that would invoke properties to us because he knew what was in tax title and he knew the benefits of it and that's how we ended up going into that circle of events being tops and etc cetera, and cetera, that's what cetera. tops was formed then. yeah that's when yeah. It was okay. and it was tops right. was formed so that didn't happen right, right. because okay. that circumvented a, a process of review right 
Well, okay, yeah. see, I look at things differently, okay? I look at it at the point of saying, all right, if you want something, hey, Bob, you we need... can agree on that. Well, that's fine. You no problem. look at okay. things differently. But, I, I will 100% okay. agree If you with leave that. it, my it's feeling... It's one of the things we completely agree upon. <laughs> if you leave it up for other people to decide, okay, and you don't bring it to their attention, okay, then you're only going to have one point of view, that point of view, say the TOPS committee, Okay, point of view is saying, well, oh, we're not going to do Pop, There's not one point of view on the top. Well, there's six a, or seven people on right, there but, that have the professional expertise to look at recreation, look at conservation, look at housing, look at redevelopment stuff. So it is the best source in the town for getting a comprehensive view. Okay. You may disagree so, with that. And I but do. it's worked well in the past. I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ser I mean, my feeling is is that Robert's Way has been there for what, 40 years almost, 30, 40 years or more for that property. And they owed $35,000 in taxes on that property. That's why I wanted to talk next week about it. But all right, that they owed $35,000, never paid it. We took it property over. The building there is dilapidated, falling apart and everything should be torn down, okay? It's been like that for years and years and years. And it wasn't until I came up here, and I know it's been presented before in the past, <coughs> To say, hey, this is a danger. It needs to come down. Okay, it was me going through the properties that the town has and saying, hey, something has to be done. There's got to be properties in this town that we can utilize for affordable housing because there's so many people looking for affordable housing in this town. And that was a key piece of the property because the only thing you can use Robert's Way for, to be totally honest, is housing, or three, housing, recreation, or keep it as nothing. All right, keep it as nothing brings nothing to the town. Wait a minute, you, you said there was a fourth before. Well, three. There's only three. <coughs> well, no, you said a fourth before. It was yeah. the sewer treatment facility. Oh, the sewer treatment facility. That was. Yeah, that was brought up well, you prior. Said that's prior, what it was. prior. Well, yeah, but you said that was, that was one of the things we were looking at. Well, we weren't looking no, at it. No, you said it, it online. Else. I didn't say that online. You said the redevelopment authority is looking at this. No, I didn't say that. I think you better look at it again. Oh, the chairman's looking okay. at this? Okay. He the brought it up. A, chairman he brought it up. Tops committee did. Let's be okay. clear. Because you and I miss and IDC. And IDC, and IDC too. But the okay. TOPS committee looked at this and that that's what the TOPS committee came came up with during that meeting years ago was that we will hold Pat on it because we think that it could be used as a potential for that issue. That was talked. That wasn't well. But it can't, it can't that's that. your opinion. But we know it can't but, be that. But that's only is, your opinion. This is part of the problem. Okay. You just said I, 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 I. Okay, yeah. describing what you want, how you want it done. You as an individual want this. The issue is, is that the rest of the town works as we. We have a team here of the redevelopment authority. The redevelopment authority looks at things. We have a tops committee. It's we as a team look at this to balance everything out and see what's in the best interest. You can agree or disagree, and I know you disagree on everything, but the fact of the matter is, is we do it as a team, as a we, not as just you as an I disagreeing with everything. Okay. And that's why now, I don't disagree try to go with everything. Through. I have to interrupt you. I don't disagree with everything. Okay. I have a difference of opinions on things, but I don't disagree on everything. But what I do do is that I went ahead and looked at all these and I brought it to this board. I discussed it with this board that this is a process that I'd like to see go through. Okay, I would. And I'd like this board to turn around and get behind it, all right, okay. to go after a uh, affordable housing or to sell it or do something like that. Because at that point, there's nothing else to do with that property. I mean, it's a residential area. You can't so do anything with commercial. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop us there because okay. we're getting past what we have in front okay. of us for an agenda. All right. Okay. I will say um, this, that the TOPS committee is... A wide vast of people that are involved in it it is open meetings to the public just like this one here um, so I'm gonna just stop right there because okay. we're way past right. what we were talking about on the, um, the disposal of properties and the policies um, I want to move on so we keep All moving right, in the right direction 
Mr. Chairman, I have to Sir. move to the selectman's office momentarily. Uh -huh. Is there anything else you guys need from me? Uh, I mean, my report was. You really, have an update from yeah. the director. You are you good? Yeah, just the extent of that. I was just going to again mention that you know I do see some housing things opening up in 2019, and um, and um, that's really all I have right now. The developer is continuing to work on his MEPA. He continues to reach out and discuss with some of the residents on acquiring the property, not the residents, but the property owners on acquiring the property. So that's an ongoing thing. Um, but right now, the, you know, that is, is moving forward. I do hope to have some more information after your next election uh, from the developer because you should be moving forward to the next milestone. But right now, I don't see any issues. Um, they are currently also working with the North Carver Water District and trying to understand all of the um, all of the engineering calculations as to how that applies, um, but um, you know, again, no no issues that I'm seeing anywhere. Okay, mm. and um, that's all I got. Unless you got any questions. No. no. Okay. Thanks, Mike. And I'll go from there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Next on the agenda is current projects being tracked by Joanna Layton. Oh, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you, Joanna, for bringing this up. I, we do this every year, so it's a good thing right. to bring forward. So yeah. please go through it. Okay. This is um, this, uh, the most current ones, and I'll go through that. Um, we had a project here. Is it the first one here? Says uh, it went it started in 2015, and if you remember, uh, or you, today you can see the church in North Carver is being renovated and they're making condos out of it. Well, this is a new owner. This particular project that this owner then came to us and said, you know, we need some more money and uh, in order to be able to uh, finish up, would you give us a loan about 12 grand? And that was for the water line, just to be clear. For okay. Bringing the water line in. And so uh, we worked out uh, the mounts all the way down, and every time they sold the condo, they would be giving us two grand. Uh, that never materialized because that uh, particular person, I believe, uh, ran into some financial difficulties. Uh, and so we never did anything more with it. So that, that's what that is. So before you move on, Joanna, I think that it, it would behoove us to take action on that because that was a vote on this payment for that um, yes it was that yeah. allocation yeah so I I think that this board should vote to um, to rescind that um, that loan um, agreement with 169 um, with walkabout Creek <coughs> Uh, excuse me, walkabout construction at 169 Plymouth Street, where they don't own that anymore. We should rescind that vote. Okay. You want to do that at the next meeting because there's no vote or anything listed? Or we're talking, <coughs> we're talking about the current project, so I think it's within our purview to to do that. Um, what was the name of it? Walkabout construction. Walkabout construction. It's 169. Oh, Plymouth I got Street. it right here. Thank you. So I think that it it would be an approved action. Okay. So I don't know if anybody would like to make that motion. They're no longer the owners of the property anyways. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Um, I would like to make a um, an action item to rescind the loan agreement in front of us for walkabout construction of the amount of, I believe it was $12,000. Yes, it was $12,000. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Motion made and second. Do I have any discussion? Hearing none, there's a motion made and seconded to rescind the agreement with Walkabout Construction for 169 Plymouth Street in the sum of $12,000. To rescind that, all in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. Bob's going to abstain. Okay, go ahead, Joanna. The next project uh, is the Urban Renewal Plan. We began that in 2015, as you can see. They gave us a deposit of $40,000. We I opened up an account. You can see underneath the name the various people that we paid money out to. Uh, Maureen Hayes, who was really doing the uh, urban renewal plan. Uh, they We were running short of some money, and in 2016 of May, they came up with another $10,000. We continued to pay out FX and Associates, Maureen Hayes, 
relocation strategies. Uh, and again, we made, we had another, last payment to her was uh, in July of 2017. Um, the balance today, as I always report, what is 3,600 here, however, I'm adding in interest, boom, 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 boom. And today, uh, February, in our treasurer's report, it coincides with $3,614.26. The next project um, is active, um, and that's the one we were talking about, uh, Main Street. Um, we called it, what do we call it? Forest Street. Forest I should Street. change it, huh? Nine, it's 94 the name, Forest name was Street. changed. What was it, 94 Forest? Yep. The um, record cards? Property record card has zero North Main Street, just not that Right, right. I'll put a, I'll yeah. change the parenthesis. I'll make it a little bit different, but I won't take it out. I'll just make it so it's known that it's been changed. Actually, I did. See, it under here it says mm -hmm. address mm -hmm. 94 Forest Street. So I really am not going to do anything there. All right. We paid out $2,100 for uh, some engineering uh, plans. Um, shovel ready, as they put it. Kathleen O'Donnell being the, uh, she didn't charge us for our legal fees. We put it in the hands of Century 21, that was Brenda Titus in June uh, 2016. We had it on the market for over a year, it didn't move. We took it off the market in the fall of 2017. We then had an offer of the late part of 2017 for $170,000. We put it on the market again back in January, and we did it for 60 days. So I don't know the status of that, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, I was the person of record, and I've not heard anything from Brenda oh, at okay. all. Okay. So okay. I'm assuming that uh, I mean, she has all my information. She knows oh. that I'm the person to oh, speak okay. with. I've got all the you know the, the signed paperwork right here. So. And, and, and the length of term yeah. was how long? 60 days. I, uh, That's what I recorded. I think it was 60. Can we put that on the next agenda so we can uh, vote on that? Uh, uh, I have Forrest. I, I, okay. 60 was not right because someone said that uh, I think Brian might have said, and, and if we can check, if we need to check. It's it's on for six months. Oh, six months. I think they do a minimum of six months. Yeah, it's on until 7 10. Oh, okay. July 10th of 2018 for $200,000. Just for clarification, on it for you, Joanna. Jo what? It's just for clarification, why instead of the 60 days, it's the... Six months. Six, Six months. months. Yes, I think when we had the discussion, Brian said, why, why restrict it? I think, and then I think we all talked about it after that and decided to put okay. it on for six months. So, so, I, so we, it's really hasn't been put on as, at this point? No, it's on. But oh, it's it only is? on until July 10th. Okay. It's on for six months beginning January 10th. Okay. All right. Okay, got it. Uh, the next status, uh, the next uh, project actually, um, we had a review of the fire police and school at the time. Uh, they elected to use Collins Center and we gave them, we had deep pockets at that time and uh, they told us that uh, we, they wanted us to come up with some money. So we did 5000 initially, and then after that, the balance was supposed to come from the town. Um, did, it? did it? You know, I don't even remember. No, huh? it's still up. $4,700 is still outstanding. Okay, so then in the lower left-hand corner, I said a, a letter was sent April 2017 to the town administrator for that, for that money. What was that? Was that a, that was take, that did happen, didn't it, Mr. Chairman? Letter was done. The, the Just for clarification, to be clear about it, the uh, municipal site review for the fire police school, the total sum for the Collins Center was uh, $9,700 that came from us. There was $5,000 that was already re reimbursed to the RDA. There's $4,700 that's still outstanding. That's the clarification on that. And that was for preliminary drawings. Okay, so the letter was sent as much as I know. Yep. We're still waiting. We should probably knock on his door again. We should have said something earlier, I guess. Uh, another one was the master plan, Serpa. Um, Carver, a business before it became defunct, uh, gave us $3,000. 
uh, on August 2015. The next monies came from RDA on September 2016. Another 948 came from uh, us again uh, on December 2016. And the balance to come from the town um, was for the FY 2018. But I noticed that in our treasurer's report that in April of 2017, we cut another check for 764.58. Mm -hmm. um, again, the same concept, the letter was sent to the town. Hopefully the town would re reimburse uh, for the $4,000. Um, it hasn't come yet, so I'm not quite sure. Because we had a commitment of 11,000. Habitat for Humanity, Freitas Project. Um, it was a family uh, that needed some additional money. Uh, they had a raised ranch and they had two children, I believe, that had a debilitating type of disease. And in order to stay in that home, they needed to have a, um, a lift or an elevator. They needed to have more a ramp put in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we gave money for that. Um, Habitat for Humanity also raised a lot of money uh, on top of all of that, and that took place in 2014. In 2014, we did a Crystal Lake Community Garden. That was a piece of property that was, uh, what was the name of the street that you had to come in on? Oak? Was it Oak? One of those streets. I think, uh, right, I think it was Oak. It's a corner lot. We were trying to uh, put a house on it. We had a lot of problems because they, the people to the left of it had foreclosures and when they uh, put in a, a well, they put it close to that <coughs> property line and we couldn't do anything more with it. So um, the people in Crystal Lake wanted to create a community garden. So we gave it to them in order for them to do anything with the land. We, had, we came up with $2,800 to have Newcomb uh, cut the trees and uh, level everything off for them. And I believe it's an active garden today. It is. You could go out to the, as you come in and you can see pictures of it there, so it's active and it works. The project status here is Waterview Village. Um, it's active, it's ongoing, only because we committed to a, um, a lien uh, for them. The conversion uh, was they had all had propane and they wanted to go gas and the gas company told them that if they could all come up with a thousand dollars each and there's 64 homes in there they could uh, put the pipes in but the problem is after they put the pipes in they had to come up with some additional monies they had to hire a contractor who, has, who had a license to connect from the street to their home change the orifices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it was a commitment of $4,000. It was initially a lot higher, but people backed out because a lot of those other people used their credit cards rather than uh, us. The loan we gave them is a, a loan that matures in 2024. Uh, after 10 years, it, it's dissolved. There's only one person um, so far who sold their home as you can see, uh, it was for $1,070, but they gave us $1,091.40 uh, simply because there's interest that was added on. Um, the RDA it has this lien on that. It's held by Balboni. That's the owners of the park, as I tell you right here, and the RDA attorney, which would be Kathleen O'Donnell. I, I did check to make sure that all these people are still alive and living in their homes, and they are and one of them, I can't remember which one, was so gracious that we allowed them to um, have this loan uh, so they could connect. So that was some good we did. Uh, in 2013, a municipal site review, again, by a police school, that uh, Collins project, that was another dish out. And we did the Ben, the Ben, bargain paint program, Bob, uh, um, Bob, that was you that mm -hmm, came yeah. up with that program, and it was really a good program, but we just couldn't get it to to kick off. I think one person was interested, and they collected uh, signs by design, created the signs. I don't even know where they are today, 
um, we had assigned, a, we committed 5000 but we really never spent more than $240. It's unfortunate that was a good program. Uh, in 2012, the town water connection, um, that's where, um, what is it, Honeydew Donuts, that little plaza, right? It's next mm -hmm. to it. Next to it. That's, no, no, you're no, right. that's part of it. Oh, that's part of it. Yeah. Uh, they needed, um, no, what am I talking about? Yeah, that's right. right. That is that. Um, we needed, they, they, I think it was you, um, uh, Will, there was an opportunity for, um, the property that's located next to 96 uh, Main Street, North Main Street. It's the vacant lot where on the corner, um, on the corner of right Plymouth the corner, Street right, and Main right, Street. Right, right. There's that, a vacant lot was underdeveloped, and the radius of the well that was at 96 North Main Street, the um, Honeydew Donuts and um, 100 feet them yeah, there circle cut into that mm -hmm. by hooking them up to water gave the opportunity for economic development on that corner lot. Right. So this board at that time had um, reached in with an agreement to uh, <coughs> offer uh, money to convert them over to the North Carver Water District, that making the lot next to it viable for economic development. Right. So that was good. One, yep. Just with that one, I don't know if you want to put this on at a later date or whatnot, but the 14600 that was spent by us, has come back like five, six, seven, nine fold with just the water mm -hmm. going into the water thing. So yeah. even though we spent that money, mm -hmm. it's already come back to the town many folds. Yes, and if they can put some prop, I think Santoro's was originally looking at that. Yeah. I think that's what prompted us to kind of take a closer yeah. look at it. Of course, it didn't happen. You're right. Uh, in 2012, housing rehab. The local housing partnership, of which I am a member of, and it's, it's inactive at this point, but I think in 2019 it's going to start up again. Um, Jack Hunter then had created a, um, what, do, what do we want to call it, grant. He had got a grant along with Halifax to go into um, Crystal Lake to do rehabs. Community development Community, block grant. Right, so it's rehabs. This one particular house uh, fell short um, of what the grant would allow for that to happen, for that particular piece of construction. Uh, Jack Hunter came to the redevelopment and asked us if we could come in and help them, which we did for uh, $915, and that helped create that rehab for that particular house. And uh, CDBJ grant was. So. We did that. That we've been in business since 2006, but we haven't really <laughs> done project tracking. And this is probably that 2012. So we'll go forward. No, good information, Thank Joanna. You. Well done. Okay, and that was that was very well done. Let's see, treasurer's report, bills payable. Okay, the, yeah, the treasury report is the same report that I gave you last time in February because mm -hmm. here it is March and it hasn't changed. So, um, do you have the treasury report? Yep. Oh, okay. I must have it too. Yeah. What did I do? Oh, no, no, I got it. Right. I just put a clip around it. Oh, yeah, that's my own personal one. Um, the balance in the checking account is $1,454.19. The savings account has $25,117.07. Year-to-date interest was $7.16. The Carver Urban Renewal Plan balance today is $3,614.26 with a total of $0.17 year-to-date. And that's the treasurer's report, so that has, um, you'd have to approve that. I want to make a motion to approve the treasurer's report as submitted. I'll make, make that motion. It's a second. Motion made and seconded uh, to approve the treasurer's report dated February 2018 as submitted. 
Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank Susan, you. Susan, do you want this report? Yes, please. <coughs> thank you. Bill's payable, uh, the only one that The only one who was that was for Susan for Susan. Uh, $75. We don't have to prove that's so ongoing. Yeah. Minutes of February 6, 2018. Do you have in your packet? Um, Oh, the code of conduct. Oh, what happened to that? It wasn't on the agenda. Oh, okay. So Will that be, could you put that on for next, uh, please? Next month. You got that final copy that I sent you? Yes. I did, and we're all squared away. Good. I didn't get one. I, I think it was just, we were just communicating back and forth. Yeah, she, she and I. Asked. All right. Jill yeah. has, she has all of She has them. She, she has it. She wasn't on the Because agenda. it wasn't on the all right. agenda.
Uh, twice on page five and once on page six, I am referred to as Mr. Savory. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I did it again. Yes. Oh my God. Told you we changed the name. I know. <laughs> Don't uh, worry. When I did it, I screwed up her name many times. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's in the bottom paragraph of page five and just about the middle of the page on <laughs> page six. Uh, and that's all I see, but it should probably be given one more read through. That was a long page. Five, six, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's at the bottom. It's twice in this paragraph, and then once in the in the middle of the next page. It's also Mr. Moore on page six, which is good. And it's Mr. Moore it seems to be everywhere else. So. Tony, man, just Mr. Savory's easier. I know it. You know, it's funny because. For all these years, I never knew what your last name was. It was always Savory. Yeah, 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 the I master know. plan, Savory. Hey, yeah. that's Savory, yeah. That no, was your it's, name. It's more. Um, Savory's my first name to keep the name alive. Yeah, right there. It's just on oh, mine. It's page four. Just oh, okay. Font, that's why. All right. Well, it's it's. In, Mr. Moore. Yeah, it's two places in that paragraph, and then on the it's next page, easier. it's I'll stand alone. All right. Okay. Okay. What's the pleasure? All right. Uh, I, I make a motion. You we approve ahead. with the changes. That you, yeah. No changes by you. No. Then no. I, just those changes. Do I have a second. I'll second that. Motion made and second to approve the minutes of February 6, 2018, as amended. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, next meeting date, I had 417. I don't know what you guys... Yeah, can you move it up a that? week, simply because I'm going to Florida for a month? And I'll be gone on the 17th. Can I screw that up? The only thing that I'm in conflict with is a planning board meeting, but... Does it have to be on a Tuesday? Can it be on a Monday? Are you, Monday. Are you busy? Yeah, Mondays, Mondays don't for me. work, and I have a North Tava Water District meeting that night. Wednesday, no good either? The 11th? Because uh, the next day, I'm gone. I could do the 11th. The 11th? That's a I can do the, the next too. agenda. Do you want to put on the next agenda to increase the um, to transfer from the savings to the checking account money? Yeah. Since we're gonna have to pay for this decision by the uh, town council, we know. Don't worry about that when that happens. I don't think we need to transfer until that comes from this board. It says yay, <laughs> nay, or whatever. A good point. Um, yeah. Usually. Usually I try to keep Mon uh, Tuesdays open. Um, Town meeting is the 20... When is it? 24th. 24th. When is election? The 28th. Right? That's Saturday Tuesday the, 20 the 24th. Right, but April. the town election is Saturday the 28th. election is the Saturday. The 28th. Afterwards. The 28th is yeah. town, yeah, okay. Well, those 9th, 10th, or 11th. Uh, I can't do the, um, the 11th. I could probably squeeze in the 10th. Um, we only have a couple things on the agenda as of yet. Um, I would like to put Robert's on way the on there again, to be honest, to, to really you can, um, you can that. discuss that. I, I wasn't here for that, so it's good that you put it on. I wasn't here. I was out. The 10th is fine with me. Yeah, is that so, okay with you, Bob? Yeah. And if it doesn't know. matter. So you're looking at the 10th. What, what time, guys? At seven o'clock, I will be leaving for a planning board meeting. Well, I can I can make five thirty. Okay, if, if we want to do it yeah, then. Yeah, I can do. Early we can too. do five. I get out okay, at one thirty. Okay, I get out at one thirty. All right. Um, for to obtain a motion for Brian. somebody. Brian's gone. So well, he's this still on until still, after still the election. Until the election. Right. I'll make a motion that uh, we schedule our next meeting for Tuesday, April tenth, twenty eighteen, at five thirty p.m. Do I have a second? Second. 
Motion made and second to schedule the next meeting for 4:10 at 5:30. All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. This Chairman, is... I know it's not in the meeting, but every April, guys, um, we commit to making a um, a report that goes back to Rockland Trust simply because we have a thirty thousand opportunity. You know, it's what do you call those equity lines we have? Uh, line of credit. And in order to renew that every year, you have to send in a, uh, not my reports, but we have um, a lady that does our reports for us. And um, she tell you know, she compares one year to the next. Yeah, that's Valerie. Valerie Varasa, Varasa her name is. Um, yeah. And we usually do it in April. Um, I can call her to see if she's, she can do that report. It re it's should three hundred dollars. That's how much it costs. So the committee has to make a decision. Yes, we can do it, and how much it's okay that we're going to spend that money. How long does it take her to do it? I don't know. I mean, if we're meeting April tenth, is it something we can vote on then, and she can have it done by the end of April? Uh, or we can do it tonight. I guess, uh, it's not on the agenda. It's though. not we, on the agenda. We've, we've um, in the past since we've hired Valerie to do it, and I think she's done it since Mr. Franny uh, had left oh, us, because yeah, Jack always it. used to do it right, for okay. us. Right, A lot of years. Um, it's always been a standard that we've done that with Valerie. She's okay. always done it for us, and uh, worked with Joanna and submitted it. It's up to the board. You guys want to authorize authorize it to happen that's great well that's good because it allows me to give her a call to remind her that we're going to get she has to get that because it's busy time of the year for, yeah. for our two April right that's true and you're going to be away so. yes exactly yeah. okay so it's really the pleasure of you guys it's um, so so it, I don't mind. it costs like 300 dollars. i don't think it's going to be any higher than that I don't she have gets it done she gives it to me i bring it in I tell you all about it. I don't know the detail because I don't know. I can't tell you right. all that detail. So but and then we, we physically, I physically submit it to the Rockland uh, people. I have a name and a person to submit it to. They approve it. It takes them about um, several months. That They'll send the chairman a letter saying we have an approval for the following year. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion? Do you have discussion? any problem with that? or? You didn't anticipate this, so it, it's covered on the open meeting law. And you didn't know about it prior to the meeting, so technically you can vote on it. Cannot. You can. can. I can. You can. It'll be he, a didn't, he didn't know. He didn't know that this was coming up. So, so I mean, so the people in the public, yeah, would, it would be a violation of the open meeting law. So we'll just put it on the next agenda, and when it gets done, it gets done. Okay, that's right. Don't worry. About it. Okay. But I'm, at least I approached you about yeah. it. All right. Well, the, the open meeting law says if the chairman didn't reasonably expect that, that you could, but they prefer that you hold off on okay. decisions that you can wait till the next month. So if it's, okay. can't, if it couldn't wait till next month, then oh. we could vote on it. But if we can wait till next month, then yeah. it's fine. Okay. All right. That's, and I saw there was no member's comment on this. Yep. Agenda. <laughs> yeah, I would have been open to that. That would have been my lead to get in there. That's why I was waiting for. All right. Can you make sure that's a standard piece of? I will. Motion to adjourn. If anybody wants to make it. All right, motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Seven thirteen. We're adjourned.